participants for this uh, very important uh, webinar and uh, also I would like to congratulate uh, the team in uh, Paris for launching this uh, Red Talk, uh, which would be a series of webinars uh, over the next few months of refrigerants. Uh, the topic that has been chosen today is, is a very interesting one and in fact a very timely one especially for the Article 5 country ozone officers and also for the industry converting uh, the manufacturing facilities and also at the end use level and the servicing sector. From all perspectives, this, this is really a very hot topic and it's a very timely selection of a topic like this. Can hydrocarbons replace HCFC slash HFC in unitary air conditioning applications? I'm also happy to uh, inform uh, the, all the participants that I also have two uh, special guests with me here in uh, Delhi, where I'm on a vacation. But uh, I, I, uh, when I, Samira approached me to give an introduction, I could not say no because this is a topic that is not only very important for all the Asia-Pacific countries and globally, but I also want to see that what contributions we all could make to this. And the two special guests we have, have a experience at the two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. On the one end, we have uh, Professor Adarwal here, uh, the RTOC and the CF member and one of the uh, big experts globally on, on the refrigerant issues, in the refrigeration air conditioning sector, and also who has done himself uh, a lot of work on not only hydrocarbons, but also advising industries on uh, Converting. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have Anshu Kumar, uh, who also is handling these issues on the ground level and the servicing sector end. So this kind of expertise is also added on, and I'm sure they would contribute in the question hour session uh, and uh, help uh, taking these discussions forward. Uh, I will uh, just like to uh, highlight uh, from the perspective of the ozone officers that uh, this is a topic which is uh, on the top most priority in the minds of the ozone officers. I have uh, visited a few countries in the last six to seven months 
the smaller countries where they are grappling with this issue of what kind of input equipment they should be importing into their country, especially relating to the conditioning sector. And the way this industry is growing, uh, these ozone officers need to take very informed decisions on uh, what kind of import they should be bringing in for two reasons. First, to be able to uh, meet their HCFC compliance commitments, what implications will it have for the servicing sector. And second, many countries like Maldives and Bhutan and many others also have carbon neutral policies in place. So if they are replacing imports of HCFC based equipment, they have the challenge of what kind of alternate equipment they should be importing in. Should they be importing in 410A, which will impact on their uh, carbon neutral status and will be difficult for them to achieve them by 2020, which is the target they have set. So these kind of challenges are there and uh, we, we need to address this uh, very much and uh, very soon. And the other uh, thing which I was noticing, I'm in Delhi today, it's the first week of April, and today, uh, last two days, it has been so hot there that people are already talking about this kind of a heat normally hits Delhi in June or July, which is the hottest season here. But now you have another two months of such hot season, so you can imagine the kind of implications it will have for the air conditioning industry. So we really need to take conscious decisions and informed decisions and advise the country of what is the best course. And in that kind of a debate, we need to see whether the advice which we are giving is something which can be adopted, followed in these countries, and whether they have enough standards and regulations in place to adopt such technologies. So these are a variety of uh, issues that will be discussed today. And uh, we have the honor of having some of the brightest minds in this field as our panelists. Uh, Bernard from uh, GIZ is there, Ole Nielsen from Junido, Professor Yun Lee from China, from Sonia Stan University. And we have HECO, which is going to be uh, facing one of the biggest challenges in this regard as it is of SPSP. I'll finish my comments here and my introduction, and I will... Uh, like to uh, wish this webinar a big success, and I'm sure we'll have good discussion. And I'll hand it over now to Samira. Thank you very much, uh, Asur, uh, for your introduction, and uh, welcome to your honorable uh, guest who stay also for the duration of the webinar. And Samira, can you listen? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, I would like now to. Um, um, provide the floor to Mr. Ayman El Kalouni, Program Officer of the Action Unit, Compliance Assistance Program, Regional Office of West Asia. Um, Ayman will be the facilitator. Samira, can you hear me? Yes, I would. Everyone can hear you. Thank you, Atul. Uh, yes, we, we can hear you very well, and thank you very much for this introduction. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much, and everything is fine. Um, I, I was saying thank you very much uh, for your introduction, and welcome to your honorable uh, guests. And uh, we would be uh, very happy if they can also stay for the duration of the webinar. And now I would like to uh, give the floor to um, uh, Mr. Ayman El Salouni, Program Officer, All on Action, UNEP, Compliance Assistance Program, Regional Office, West Asia. Um, Ayman of this session. Good. Good uh, everyone. I hope uh, my voice is clear and reachable to all. Can you kind of confirm, Damira, that you can uh, hear Yes, well? I confirm. Yes, I confirm. We can hear and thank you very much, Ayman. Please go ahead. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, uh, Atul, for the very well uh, introduced uh, talking points uh, about the importance of this session. And we will try not to take longer of your time. I know that you are all anxious to listen to our uh, keynote speaker today. I will just go through quickly the presentations of today. 
uh, and the agenda, which will be starting supposedly by the presentation by Mr. Bernard Sigurd from the GIZ for Klima. And I'm not sure whether he is able to connect or not yet. I think he has some technical problems, and we will hopefully have him on board very shortly. And followed by a presentation by from Mr. Colin Nelson. And then uh, we will have a presentation from uh, Dr. Uh, King Shuli, and then it will be ended by uh, saving the address for the last, as they say, uh, by a presentation from Mr. Uh, Tong Sifang uh, from the Foreign Economic Cooperation Office at the Ministry of Environmental Protection of China. And uh, I think you have all the short files in front of you. Uh, you have received it of the keynote speakers, so I think I do not have to go through them again. But I would like to assure that the selection of the panelists was based on the best experience in applying uh, hydrocarbon as alternative for unit air conditioning lately. And uh, either from the industry or implementing agencies or on the nuclear protocol or from the government side. We wish today also to have uh, representatives from the industry and the government of India, but apparently uh, we couldn't, uh, the time of the webinar was not, uh, was not suitable for them. But uh, we are glad to hear that we have uh, our guest, uh, Dr. Akarwal. Uh, attending as well with uh, our colleague at Umbakai, and I'm sure he will be contributing uh, very uh, importantly to this uh, session. I would like, uh, with this short introduction, to uh, allow, allow you to start the, uh, uh, the webinar, but I would like to remind our uh, guest speakers to limit their presentation to the 10 to 15 minutes as maximum, understanding that there is a lot of information and we may expect a lot of questions and we would like to use the time as much as possible to the benefit of the uh, all. Thank you so much for attending with us today and I look forward to, uh, to the successfulness of this webinar and to your valuable input. Send that, the all the perspective. Thank you, Ayman, uh, for introducing uh, the timetable and uh, to remind uh, that we have to really stick uh, on, the, on the time to be able to allow enough time for the question and answer from our today's participants. Uh, as you mentioned, um, Mr. Bernhard is not uh, in the session yet. Uh, for some technical matters we are trying to address, and he may start, uh, he may yet, uh, Mr. Oli Nielsen. Um, Mr. Nielsen is uh, from the United Nations, from UNIDO, from the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. Um, and he, he will uh, speak uh, about the hydrocarbons as alternative to HDFC 22. And the question, a cool solution, Mr. Nielsen, we'd like to uh, hear more about this topic from you. We are listening to you. Thank you very much, Shamira. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. Good. I will try to share my PowerPoint with you. Yes, please. Okay. Is it visible? Yes. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for giving uh, UNIDO this opportunity to, to provide input to this very important topic. Um, I decided to make my presentation as a question whether hydrocarbons is a good solution or not. And I call it a cool solution. I learned later on someone is using the same terminology, but that was by accident. I would like to to touch on five topics. First of all, do we have any hydrocarbons available that are suitable replacements for HCC22? Second, what is needed in the production setting? Third, what is required in terms of proper servicing? Fourth, how do we arrange our AC products uh, to operate with hydrocarbon? And then fifth, 
how will the market accept these new products? And based on that, I will elaborate on, on the opportunities and hopefully come up with some kind of answer to my question in the title, whether it's a cool solution or not. <clears throat> As for the candidates, we have uh, already a number on the table. I have listed here those that are known to me. First, the two pure substances, R290 or propane, or R1270, which is propylene. Um, we have recently seen also a number of mixtures entering the market, and I put here the two which are supposedly commercial available now. The first one is the 433B, which is available from China. It's a mixture of propane and propylene, um, and I can see on the slide that I have put the wrong numbers. It's actually 95% propane and 5% propylene. Sorry for that. Uh, but this substance is now available and it's being tested in China with some of the air conditioner manufacturers. Another substance which is on the market is R443A, also known as HCR188C2, which is a three-component blend comprising propane, propylene, and isobutylene. Unfortunately, I couldn't come across the exact composition, but according to the data, it's basically propane with small quantities of propylene and isobutane. <coughs> I have tried to compare these three known alternatives to R22, and I have here made a piece of modern art where I display the relative volumetric capacity of the gases, all compared to 22, and as a function of the condensing temperature. So you will see on the, the left side, we have the relative volumetric capacity. Uh, volumetric capacity should be understood so that if you take the same compressor, what refrigeration capacity will come out of it if you change the gas from 22 to another one? And you will see that uh, the R1270, which is the propylene, comes very, very close to R22. It's very close to the 100% line here. Whereas we have the blue line, which is the pure propane, goes from 15 to almost 20% less volumetric capacity. This means, in theory, that you would need a larger compressor. The blend from China, 433B, only has slightly better volumetric capacity. I don't see this as a big issue that the volumetric capacity is less uh, to this level. I will come back to that later on. Then I calculated <coughs> the coefficient of performance. Again, this is in relation to uh, HCFC 22, and you will see all of them are slightly below the COP of HCC 22. We are talking about 1% to about 7% below. My conclusion from this is that we would like to uh, <clears throat> protect the ozone layer. We can do that with, with hydrocarbon. We would like to avoid uh, impact on the global climate. We can do that with hydrocarbon. But we cannot get better efficiency just by changing the gas. We need to do something else. But I will just, I just added another potential alternative, which is the 410A, which is very widely used. Uh, and you will see that 410A has completely different relative COP. Uh, and for the sake of Ironman, I put here uh, the T3 condition, which is the high ending condition. And there you will see that 410A is at least 10% poorer than, than R22. Uh, of course, this is also to the, the participants from the West Asian region. <coughs> In terms of production setup, uh, I would like to say that for the last 20 years, uh, hydrocarbons has been used in a production setting. It started all back in 1992 when green trees introduced uh, the green trees uh, in eastern Germany. Green trees started initially 
with a mixture of propane and butane, basically because that has almost the same properties as either CFC-12 or HFC-134A. But later on, uh, the company in Germany shifted to pure isobutane, as did the rest of the world. And I conclude from this that even isobutane has a significantly lower volumetric capacity than CFC, the industry decided to put this uh, gas instead of a mixture. So going back to one of the previous slides where I showed the volumetric capacity of propane versus R22, I don't see this as an issue. <coughs> Further, in terms of production uh, setup, we have a number of uh, directives which guide us how to do it in a safe manner. I mention here the ethics directives, which are from Europe, but, but they are very useful also outside Europe and for developing countries. We have basically two directives, one from 94, which deals with equipment in a potential um, explosive atmosphere, and the one from 99 deals with the workspace, so that's more labor safety. We have a number of guidelines for ATRIX directives, and in addition, in Europe, there is a long list of harmonized standards telling how to implement this directive in a particular setting. Uh, so based on that, I don't see any issues at all in terms of a production setup. However, as I put as the last bullet point, an AC production is significantly different uh, from a production of domestic refrigerators. In particular, there are more workspace, small places in the production where you can have a potential leak. I'm thinking of the testing area, for example. So it needs to be considered carefully. We cannot just duplicate what we did 20 years ago for domestic refrigeration. But having said this, there is no problematic issue at all. Just for your information, I have taken a picture of the refrigerant charging station that was uh, installed in Dekarkash Jartenstein when Greenpeace had the green freeze produced. That's the one on the left side. And on the right side, you will see a modern installation with hydrocarbon where you have the charging station as a small compact unit, only with a small tray which is ventilated so that there is no risk in the production area. So during these 20 years, there has been a lot of development on the equipment side as well. <clears throat> uh, if, if I speak too much, please uh, tell me to speed up. Um, in terms of service, uh, thanks to, to our colleagues in Germany, GIZ, they have prepared a lot of useful manuals and guidelines, so I can only work on how to work with hydrocarbons. Training is, of course, a mandatory issue, and the technicians need to understand there are certain things very different when we work with hydrocarbons. Coming from an implementing agency, I also believe we have a task, because we are, through the Montreal Protocol Framework, providing equipment for service technicians, and we have to consider this very carefully. I just picked a few examples here. Uh, first of all, if we work with fluorinated gases, we talk about recovering the gas. If we work with hydrocarbons, we just need to get it outside. So we need a venting hose instead of a, a instead of a recovery machine. And also we need to find out what size should the venting hose be. We have seen in the market some which have five millimeters. Maybe they will they are too tight for this. Another issue I just picked them was um, a hydrocarbon leak detector. It is recommended to use such a leak detector not to find leaks, but to monitor the atmosphere where the technician is working. This is a brilliant idea, but doing so, we have to be aware that most leak detectors, they have a so-called ultra-zero function, meaning that it measures the atmosphere which it's in. So with such a function, we will not see any uh, flammable atmosphere. So we have to make sure to order leak detectors without up to zero. These are just two examples. We are working on defining the complete uh, service tool package for technicians so that we can provide it to our projects. Another issue in connection with service is the purity of hydrocarbon. I have raised the 
issue a couple of times in, in China, whether it should be the refrigerant quality, laboratory quality, or maybe just ordinary trade quality. Uh, I believe in a production setting, all will go for the refrigerant quality. But when it comes to service, we never know what the service technician you choose, because you will have the cheap LPG on every corner, and that may be a shortcut to, uh, to save money for the technician. So I think we need to find out what is the impact on hydrocarbon purity, and can we accept a 97.5% purity instead of 99.9% purity. <clears throat> in terms of the product, we all know that energy efficiency uh, is being looked at from all sides, so we need an energy efficient product. As I showed earlier, the coefficient of performance, which is also a kind of energy efficiency, is poorer than with HCFC22. So we have to look at the product in order to offset this loss of COP. Second, we have to ensure that the application is safe. Uh, first of all, I believe that we should focus on minimizing the refrigerant charge. There are many attempts to do so, and I listed just one example that I came across recently. The compressor would account for 25% of the total charge, but with a redesigned compressor, this amount can be reduced to 20, meaning that the total charge of the air conditioner would be reduced by 5%, only by modifying the compressor. <clears throat> also, we need to think out of the box in terms of uh, safety measures. I called the bullet point here intelligent safety measures. It could be having a solenoid valve in the liquid line that is triggered by a sensor on the indoor line. Uh, there might be other ways to do intelligent safety, and uh, I encourage everyone to think out of the box and try to <coughs> to come up with proper solutions, because that would definitely open the market. And, and last but not least, of course, each manufacturer needs to assess the risks what could potentially happen or what would not happen. <coughs> In terms of Ole, yes. Can we uh, can you will be able to conclude in uh, three minutes? Yes I will. Thank you so much. Um, in terms of market acceptability, we have one standard that deals with air conditioner and that standard uh, gives guidelines what would be the maximum charge. Uh, the standard is also being adopted uh, on national levels. Other criteria is price, but indication so far shows that the price of a hydrocarbon air conditioner is comparable to, to 410A air conditioner. I will go quickly. I mentioned China because China has taken a very progressive step. Uh, they have decided that through their HPMP they will focus on hydrocarbon uh, as a replacement of 22. We will hear more about it. Uh, but also part of the Chinese HPMP is a substantial uh, technical assistance component. And I have listed here five topics that will be investigated in China. And I have to say it will be international tenders. So those of you listening to this webinar, uh, look at our webpage or FECO's webpage because there will be a request for proposals coming up soon. But I believe this technical assistance component in China will help the whole world in moving forward with hydrocarbons. And I will end up with a, with a traffic light. Uh, it was intended to be a traffic light, but I tried to rate the five criteria. Hydrocarbons, yes, we have them. The production setup is clear. We can easily do it. Servicing, we still have some work to be done, but it's not impossible. The product can be handled, and market acceptability is not uh, impossible. So the question, the answer to the question is yes, but I would like to say that hydrocarbon is not a universal solution like HCC22. We need to focus on certain applications, and I believe short term, we have to look at smaller splits or standalone units. I indicated here 1.5 ton or 18,000 BTU, but I believe that is most likely what we can do short term. 
And then longer term, we should focus on window and larger space. And with this, thank you very much. Now, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Tin Chun Li, Associate Professor at Sun Yat-sen University, Guangzhou, China. Yes? Dr. Li? Yeah. We are listening to you. You may like to activate your webcam if you wish to do so. Can you, can you see me or can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Samira? Yes, we can hear you, Dr. Lee. We can hear you. Samira? Hello? Yes, Dr. Lee, we can hear you. And we can hear you. Okay. I want to show my PPT first. Okay. Yes, it's fine. Okay, it's okay? Yes, everything is okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's really uh, my uh, honor and pleasure to attend such a great uh, webinar. And uh, today, uh, my presentation is uh, can uh, R290 replace R22 in unitary uh, air conditioner. Uh, two topics I want to uh, share or discuss with you. Uh, what is can or can replace? And then how to replace? So, uh, uh, sorry. When uh, when when people are saying or talking about an uh, uh, alternative can replace uh, R22, we must uh, think about what means can replace. In my in my opinion. Uh, the following three uh, requirements should be met. First is the performance. Uh, meaning, mainly uh, is the capacity and the efficiency. Second is the safety. Compared with the performance, safety is more complex. For, for example, in the past time, a uh, represent uh, is flammable or toxic proxy cannot be used for uh, air conditioner, especially for residential air conditioner. But as the time going on, uh, flammable, flammable refrigerant become more and more possible to be the next generation alternative. But toxic, toxic ones are still no, especially for residential air conditioners. The last thing is uh, marketing, uh, cost and the regulations impact the marketing uh, mainly. Uh, back to the propane, propane or R10, R290's performance. Uh, according to published test results, it can be found R290 has five to 15% higher uh, efficiency, COP or EER, than R22. But uh, 5 to 10% less capacity than R22, especially for heating capacity. Okay, safety. When we, when everyone uh, talking about uh, propping or R290, everyone may think it is dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Okay, is it the real situation? So when we think 
uh, are presented dangerous or not? Three questions should be answered firstly. First, propane is flammable. Does this mean air conditioner with R290 is flammable either? Second, if the air conditioner with R290 is flammable, does this mean air conditioner must or ignited absolutely? The last, even if a conditioner with R prop R290 is ignited, that this means there must be an explosion. Okay, so normally people are uh, confused uh, the risk of propping with a conditioner with propping. Things. There are uh, not enough number of uh, air conditioner with propane or other hydrocarbons. Uh, we cannot get a very, how to say, uh, very good calculation about the safety of air conditioner with hydrocarbons. But uh, in the past uh, 15 years, 500 million uh, hydrocarbon refrigerator have been used. From from uh, hydrocarbon refrigerators data, we may get some useful uh, conclusions for air conditioner with propane or other hydrocarbons. Now, people think hydrocarbon refrigerator are safe enough and uh, accept uh, such products. So the question is, if the air conditioner with propane is safe enough with hydrocarbon uh, refrigerator. Is it okay or not? According to Daniel's research results, the frequency of the, the frequency of ignition uh, for air conditioner is much lower than refrigerator. That means the risk of the ignited for air conditioner is much lower than hydrocarbon refrigerator. That's the theory, theory uh, research. Also, leak and ignition tests performed by, uh, have, have performed by changing fire research institute, which is a, a professional unit uh, for fire and uh, firefighting, something like that, in China. Uh, R290 are leak, uh, were leaked uh, from air conditioner indoor units and then keep ignition. It is can be concluded that the air conditioner with uh, R290 is hard to be ignited. Uh, even the air conditioner were, uh, were ignited, the maximum heat flux is about uh, 3 uh, kilowatts per square meter, which is lower than 3.5. This number is the, the requirement for normal firefighting. The highest temperature is about 230 degrees. So the most dangerous is the smoke, which is the result from the, the fire of uh, plastic material, which is the same for nominal uh, air conditioner. So, Choose uh, alternative refrigerant should be balanced between environment, safety, and uh, performance. At least, uh, at not stage, there is no excellent resolution. Let's go to the potential marketing or marketing issue for protein. Last year, 
There is a carbon tax policy published by uh, Australian government, which would uh, result a much higher uh, price for air conditioner with higher DWP refrigerant, for example, uh, R14A. So the potential, the potential market for no GWP, no GWP represents would be, uh, how to say, uh, increasing. Also, according to information from the APA, USA may choose hydrocarbon uh, to replace R10 2 for window type units. New uh, Europe efficiency uh, standards are published uh, this year. Uh, according to this police, products with DWP lower than 150 can, uh, how to say, can have a lower COP, 10%. 10% net. This is a, a good chance for air conditioner with hydrocarbon. In China, the national standard is a public issue. Uh, that means air conditioner with flammable represents are allowed to the market. So maybe before two uh, uh, 2015, air conditioner with propane would be put into the market. Okay, let's, to, let's go to the next uh, topic. How to replace or replace R22 with propane? When we develop a new uh, air conditioner product, the following four steps should be followed, flying, R&D, market, and service. During the, between the steps, standards and the regulations play more and more important rules. For air conditioner with propane, the first challenge is performance uh, decrease because of the refrigerant mass is restricted. If uh, the, the charge mass is limited or, or the charge the refrigerant is enough, uh, capacity would be in fact first. And uh, in order to Get the rated capacity, the efficiency would uh, decrease. In order to improve the performance, some measures can be taken. For example, uh, specially designed uh, compressor and uh, specially designed heat exchanger. From this figure, you can find use a wider uh, uh, heat changes thing. It is uh, good to improve heating capacity. Also, use a smaller tube evaporator. It is good to improve heating capacity. The next and the and the uh, more uh, difficult challenge is the safety or potential risk of flammability. Mm. Safety is underneath. Most deaths are needed no matter how much measures have been taken. So, what we can do. An astronomic uh, price or a very high price product is uh, useless. So, how to stay 
or who can tell me, tell us, the air conditioner is safe enough? Of course, the standard. That's why there is a standard. According to IEC standard, the air conditioner with a flammable uh, refrigerant, refrigerant should pass the leaky test. If no measures are taken, or if there is no change for R22 uh, air conditioners, you can find the concentration of protein will rise very quickly and get and get to the LFL. Okay, no flammable limitation. Very quickly. In order to pass the liquid test or increase the safety of air conditioner with propane, some uh, simple but useful measures can be taken. For example, sealed electronic control box, non-screw connector, now accumulation uh, air conditioner body and also can add a uh, leak detector in the indoor unit and uh, add cut off valves to cut off the refrigerant uh, circulation when there is a leak. With this uh, design change, we can find the DK test can pass easily. From the figure, you can see the concentration of the propane in the electric box. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Samira? Hello. Hello. Uh, thank, yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee, for your thorough um, uh, presentation and uh, all the details. Uh, I uh, would like to really give you a special thank you because I know that it's very late uh, now. It's uh, like 9.30 uh, p.m. at least at your uh, China time. <laughs> it is okay. We are taking your person at the time. We really appreciate uh, your participation and uh, all the information you provided to our audience today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, now I would like just to announce to uh, the participants and um, to the panelists that, that unfortunately, uh, as for uh, now, uh, Mr. Bernhard, uh, who was supposed to give a presentation as the first panelist, uh, is at the airport and apparently the connection is not going through and probably, unfortunately, we will not have the chance to listen to his presentation during this session. Uh, maybe we can hope for, uh, like, uh, his, um, uh, to, to invite him for upcoming uh, session. As you all know, this uh, Red Talk 1 is uh, the first of a series of five uh, webinar sessions. Uh, uh, and we, of course, we will uh, try to have Mr. Van Hart on upcoming sessions. Uh, with this, uh, let me now, uh, on behalf of Ozone Action, introduce Mr. Jean Vizeng uh, to give his presentation. Mr. Zifeng? Yes. Um, Hello? Uh, Hello. Yes, we can, we can see that you are sharing your desktop. Thank you. You have the floor. Please go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. And uh, we are, uh, it's our great honor that we can uh, introduce the new progress on the uh, hydrocarbon refrigerant. I mean, the R290 uh, development in the room air conditioning se uh, sector in China. 
and I want to thank UNEP to invite us to be involved. Uh, as you know, uh, for the room air conditioning sector, the ESCOM uh, approved the uh, HPMP, HCFC out management plan for this sector, and uh, with a priority that we should face out uh, uh, at least uh, 10,000 tons of its uh, HCFC 22 uh, before 2050, and also uh, we should at least convert 18 room air conditioner production lines from R22 to hydrocarbon technologies. Uh, also, China would like to uh, introduce hydrocarbon as the major technology uh, during the ODS, uh, uh, R22 phase out in the room air conditioning sector. Uh, so, next, I would like to introduce some. Uh, New progress stand up. I think Mr. Uh, Dr. Li Tingxin uh, already introduced some of this. Uh, we, uh, the national standard for 706.32 was issued last year and it will be uh, coming into effect next month. Uh, we will have a, how to say, we will have a uh, ceremony on this standard issue uh, with UNEF uh, this month, uh, end of this month uh, in Shenzhen, China. This, the biggest, uh, how to say, the, uh, this standard uh, adopted IEC uh, 60335, uh, this standard, and uh, uh, it is very useful or it is very valuable for the room air conditioning sector because, you know, in this standard, the flammable substances are allowed to be used as the uh, refrigerant. Uh, of course, uh, there are some also some specific requirements, like Dr. Lichichin uh, introduced just now. Uh, but this is a good starting. I mean, uh, from next Month, uh, the uh, 290 air conditioners can be put into the market in China. Uh, we also uh, have done the risk assessment for the room air conditioners with the uh, uh, hydrocarbon refrigerator. Uh, uh, this has been done by the Tianjin Fire Research Institute, uh, also Dr. Li Xinxin introduced. Uh, this institute belongs to the Ministry of Public Se uh, Security of China, and uh, it is uh, an authorized institution to, for such kind of risk assessment. Uh, the risk. Uh, for the uh, room air conditioners with 290 uh, during the uh, during its life, I mean, in the using, installation, and the servicing, uh, was assessed. And uh, the results uh, said that the, pro uh, the probability is much less than uh, one per million, uh, which is acceptable in most of the countries at, uh, at this With 290 as the refrigerant is safe, has two parties uh, agreed to build a new room air conditioner production line 
with the tonality as the uh, refrigerant. And also, we have another demonstration project for the conversion in media. Uh, this project uh, was, uh, uh, was founded by the uh, um, Motor Protocol MLF, Market Electoral Fund. And the UNIDO is the uh, international implementing agency. And also, uh, we have the, uh, we have a compressor production lines, uh, which will be converted to 290, uh, also, uh, in, uh, Meiji. This is also funded by the MLF. Uh, till now, these two lines, uh, already finished the most of the work. And we believe that uh, they will be coming into operation for the trial uh, in June uh, of this year. And uh, uh, at SECO, uh, the Foreign Economic Cooperation Office, uh, SDTMO uh, of the uh, uh, Mutual Protocol Project, of China already signed uh, nine uh, contracts with the uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, include, including nine room air pro uh, production lines and the three room air uh, conditioner compressor production lines, which will be converted to R290. Most of the main manufacturers uh, in China, also I see in the world, like Gui, Media, Air, uh, were involved in these uh, contracts. Other intentions for the conversion of the 290 room air conditioner lines or the uh, compressor lines were also submitted and, <clears throat> and they are uh, being evaluated. Uh, we are now very confident that we will finish the target, uh, which is 18 lines converted to 290 with a capacity of at least uh, 4.5 million units uh, per year. And uh, we are confident that we will, uh, China will also uh, fish out uh, at least 10,000 tons of 22 in room air conditioners before 2015 and we will uh, achieve our targets set in the agreement between Chinese government and the ESCOM. Uh, since 290 is a totally new technology for the room air conditioners because, you know, in this sector, uh, for all of these years, only the unflammable refrigerator were used, like the TD2 like 14 So uh, this is the first time in China that this sector will use the uh, flammable refrigerant. So uh, we have to fix another uh, problem is that uh, the technology is not so, how to say, is not as advanced as 22 or 14 uh, So the Chinese government will help uh, to will help to uh, do some technical or technology research uh, to help the sector um, for the design, for the development, for the research of the 290 technologies. And now we are uh, trying to uh, focus on some very urgent issues, like to reduce the charging amount like to give some safety mirrors uh, and all of these issues, like the uh, uh, heating uh, capacity. Uh, we will focus on these uh, uh, on these problems, and uh, we will uh, help the sector to solve these problems to uh, promote the hydrocarbon technologies, the uh, 290 technologies uh, in in the room air conditioners. So uh, that's all for my uh, introduction. Uh, thank you very much.
for your attention and so thank you uh, you thank you Sinra. okay yes. Uh, yes thank you very much uh, mr Vizzi Feng, for your uh, presentation can you hear us So I wanted to thank you on behalf of Ozone Action uh, for your uh, in, in presentation. Uh, on behalf of the Foreign Economy Cooperation Office, Ministry of Environmental Protection, China. And uh, I would like now to invite uh, um, Ayman to open the question and answer session. Okay, uh, thank you, Samira, and uh, thanks a lot for uh, Mr. Nelson, and Dr. Lee, and uh, Mr. Zhu Long for the excellent and so presentations. And uh, we already received a couple of questions I'm going to start with, and you are uh, free to send more for all the uh, participants when you can attend this one yesterday in the webinar. The first question we received, actually there were two questions from uh, Kontar Singh, uh, emergent student uh, from India, and he raised two questions. Uh, one I considered a little bit uh, not related to our topic, but I would send a forward to the panelists, but I would like uh, to try to keep uh, the focus on the topic of the webinar. Uh, and the first question which is related to the topic is uh, asking if you can, uh, for the panelists, uh, throw some light on how far the natural resurgence can go replacing HCCs compared to the hydrocarbons. And uh, the other question was about the, uh, the large stocks that will retain in equipment uh, from HCCs. Uh, and how the multilateral fund and the multilateral protocol parties will deal with this large stocks uh, uh, because the experience with the CFC apparently was not up to the level of expectation of most of the developing countries. And I will stop here and uh, for allowing the panelists who ever would like to respond to give us some feedback on the two questions before I raise the, the other question raised by another attendee. Uh, Uh, I'm not sure if my voice is clear, but can panelist anyone who's uh, interested to respond to any of the questions, please? Yes, I can answer. This is Ole. Am I connected? So, the first question, hydrocarbons, they are natural refrigerants as well. Uh, so, they are in the same group. Um, I see hydrocarbons as the best alternative we have in the group of natural refrigerants. Ammonia for, for residential purposes is really not an issue, basically because ammonia is not compatible with copper. Um, we have seen some attempts to use uh, CO2, and I believe in moderate climate CO2 can be a good solution, and in particular, if it's a combined air conditioner and heat pump, then it shows uh, quite good efficiency. That was for the first question. For the second question, um, we know that there will be a huge inventory of uh, equipment with HCFC. Uh, the activity we are looking at in terms of HPMP is to recover and reuse this inventory. Um, we have no clue if there will be a funding window eventually from the multilateral fund <coughs> to destroy this. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nelson. And any other feedback from the uh, panelists before I move to the second question? If not, we received a question from uh, Luis Lisnex, the National Ozone Officer from Grenada, is uh, inquiring about the two the presentation uh, provided uh, 
to the opinion of the FND, conflicting information on comparing SUP and energy efficiency of R22 and R290 propane. Um, the seeking clarification about uh, which technology is actually the most energy efficient. I, I can give my input to this. Um, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I fully understand the confusion. Uh, but I think I can explain it uh, quite easily. The diagrams I showed were purely theoretical diagrams. So it's a so-called soft retrofit or soft conversion. Uh, no, product, no product enhancements have, have been applied. Uh, the ones showed by, by my colleague from Nubia they are the actual figures with an optimized product. Uh, and then you will see a completely different picture. I, I believe with the efforts uh, put in place by the, in particular the Chinese manufacturer, we will see uh, more energy efficient appliances with 290. But it's not a matter of the gas only, it's a matter of optimizing the product. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Uh, Dr. Lee, you would like to complement to, to this topic as well? Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, so, the, just as an, uh, Mr. Nielsen said, uh, for the efficiency of uh, uh, Art 290, uh, there are lots of uh, published test uh, results. It shows that protein would uh, have a ten percent higher efficiency than R22 uh, with retrofit uh, with retrofit uh, replace. However, for the real pro product, uh, it's an, how to say it's more complex. Uh, the main reason is the restricted uh, refrigerant uh, mass. For the small, for the um, smaller uh, air conditioner, uh, the efficiency of propane may keep higher than 22, at least the 5 uh, to 10 percent. But for um, large uh, products, for example, uh, uh, 1.5 HP or 2 HP products, in order, in order to get the same capacity, uh, the, the efficiency of the air conditioner may decrease, as I have introduced in my presentation. So, Normally, parking can get uh, similar efficiency with R22 or a little higher, yeah, a little higher, maybe less than 5% or about 5%, yes. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lee. And uh, I would like to move to another question raised by uh, um, Ms. Kinala Wolverine from the Environmental Investigating Agency. And her question is for Mr. Zong uh, Zifang about uh, requesting additional information about types of refrigeration air conditioning equipment being currently produced and whether they are smaller units or larger multi spread systems, and what's the maximum charge size of the units being produced currently? Uh, okay, thank you. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, uh, for the for the production lines, we already did projects. This production lines can both uh, produce both the smaller units, also the larger might uh, split uh, uh, split units. Uh, but for as I know. For most of the manufacturers, they would like to put some small un smaller units in the market first, and then the larger units, like the split, uh, split units. Uh, uh, the maximum part size for the 290 is 300 grams. So this is the requirement of the standard. And now, uh, as the new development of the hydrocarbon technology uh, uh, we can uh Doctor Mr uh Don can you please uh try to repeat again because I think the voice was not so clear. Three hundred grams, less than three hundred grams uh, to ninety in a uh, one point five house power uh, split unit. Yes. First question about the types of the room air conditioning equipment being uh, produced. Uh, um, Mr. Zong, I don't think that uh, we are hearing you. So, Samira, can you find it? Yes, probably there is a microphone uh, problem. Uh, Mr. Zong, if you can please uh, check your microphone. Okay, maybe uh, Ayman, we can go to the next next uh, question, okay. and then we can go back to this one. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I received another question from Mr. Amir Bradford. Uh, his, his question is for the implementing agencies, and I, in this case, I, I will hand it to Mr. Nelson because I think he's the only one from the panelist representing agencies at the moment. Uh, asking about uh, what type of activities agencies are doing in developing countries to promote the hydrocarbons mm -hmm. in terms of the safety management, capacity building, technician certification systems, storage regulation, uh, transportation safety, etc. Okay, thank you very much, Ivan. Actually, you could have answered that yourself, <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, in, in countries where hydrocarbons are being considered, we ensure that the market is ready to, to handle the hydrocarbons. So there will be extensive training in how to do proper servicing of hydrocarbon uh, appliances. There will also be a small package of necessary equipment and tools in order to perform this service. I believe certification is more a unit activity. So I mean, I, I will pass that back to you. Um, uh, we will also look into to the storage and transportation issues. Um, again, if we are in a country where there is no manufacture taking place, we are only focusing on the service sector, and there is not a big difference there to the domestic refrigeration where we have used hydrocarbons for many, many years. Okay. Thank you, uh, Oli. And uh, I can agree, cannot agree more, but I think uh, 
you already, uh, as you need to uh, make a choice if we were fortunate to have next to the partner with us, have better experience recently in implementing similar activities in countries where the movement towards the half carbon is taking place. However, the typical activities which will be applied in most of the countries, including activities related to the hydrocarbon, whenever it's applicable, will include certification programs and a uh, review and introduction of new codes of good practice uh, or ex updating existing codes of good practice to incorporate the hydrocarbon servicing requirement as well as the work related to updating or establishing the standards and code related to the containers and transportation as well as storage and handling. So all these packages of uh, policy measures and standards are considered by all agencies whenever it is applicable in any developing countries. Uh, allow me now to uh, also another question raised by Mr. Samir Kurarkani, partly from the uh, Bahrain, one of the manufacturing companies for air conditioning, our company, and he is asking whether do you see the R290 is can be applied as a solution for wind air conditioning where you don't have uh, any way to install isolating what and maybe Dr. Lee and Mr. Nelson uh, can uh, give some feedback about this question. I can repeat the question again. Do you see that, that the R290 uh, if applied to the wind air conditioner, uh, can be uh, installed where you do not have any way to install an isolating valve. Dr. Lee? Uh, yes. Uh, that Mr. Kukar really about the yes. question. Yes. yes. Um, you know, in, uh, for China market, there is a very, uh, few, uh, window type uh, air conditioner. So that's why, uh, in China, we start, uh, developing propping, propping air conditioner, uh, is a split type. But, so, yes, we did some tests. A very, uh, very rough test for window type. Uh, the window type, uh, air conditioner with, uh, dropping is much easier to than split type. But regarding your question, there is no, uh, there is no way to use the isolation box. Uh, to be, to be honest, uh, we didn't consider such um obviously such a problem since the window type uh had has a more compact uh, compact system and uh, less uh quick changes. So yes, uh we we, we until now we we didn't uh, we didn't uh, think about uh, where to install isolating box, but uh, uh, according to our test, or uh, very rough, uh, very limited experience, uh, window window type uh, air conditioner with uh, propping should be easier than split type. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we are uh, receiving a lot of questions. The topic is interesting uh, to many, and uh, but I'd like not to keep you all the day uh, on this webinar. So I'll try to take another two or three more questions uh, maximum. I will start by uh, the waiting list in order as we received it. We have uh, Indrajit Poots from the uh, Center for Science and Environment in India, and the question is about what's the scale of use of hydrocarbon for air conditioning in the developed countries? 
Hmm. It's a big policy question, but uh, maybe just a general answer if you have any information uh, that can be helped in applying to this question. Um, I, I can share my share my view. Um, we know that more than 70% of, of the global market of air conditioners is air produced in China. Uh, so for me, it's natural that that the new developments come come out of China also. Uh, in Europe, we can use it, but I don't believe we have any production of ACs with with hydrocarbon in Europe, uh, since most of it is anyway imported. Um, so I believe um, we will see it basically in, in China, and I know also in India you have a production line for, for air conditioners. I don't think we have much outside yet, but we can do it because we are following the same standard as uh, mentioned by the Chinese colleagues. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to get back to the question that was uh, not uh, answered to clearly to ask due to the voice problem from Mr. Uh, Dong. Is he a, uh, can you hear us, Mr. Dong? Mr. Zhang, are you still connected? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you please um, um, increase the volume, please, or speak closer to the microphone? Thank you very much. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, you like it, uh, need to remind you with the question again, Mr. Zong, it was about the uh, types of air conditioning equipment being produced and whether they are smaller or bigger. I think you have replied this part, maybe it was not clear to all, but you have mentioned that. Yeah. Thing. Uh, we're starting with the uh, smaller yeah, equipment yeah. and then moving on. Okay, so this is okay now? Okay. So uh, the first. Uh, Mr. Zong, excuse me to interrupt you, but apparently there is the sound problem or the uh, connection yeah, right to your is, microphone. Uh, right is in the chat box. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. If you can write it and to, in the chat box okay. and send okay. it to make sure that all receive it. Okay, thank you. Okay, and we have another question from uh, Jana Tutli, uh, Lera. Uh, to all the panelists, uh, mentioning that this uh, year we celebrated the 20th year of green and global success with the 290 in 20th time, and uh, how do you think that we can get to this uh, point? I turn it back to the panelists. Uh, I do personally believe that it will take less time than 20 years this time because there is a global uh, tendency of uh, trying to reduce dependency on the uh, GW, higher GWP alternatives and apparently hydrocarbon is a promising alternative to many uh, applications, particularly the smaller one. But I would like also to hear from the panelists, maybe Mr. Nelson or Dr. Lee, if they can uh, give us uh, information, more information about how to we believe, or when do we believe that we can celebrate similar success for the R290 in terms of time? Hmm. I, I can start sharing with you. I, I definitely hope that we will be able to have such a celebration because I think it, it's the right way to go. Uh, we are still having a different technical issue than with domestic refrigeration because there we were operating with charges of 30 to 50 grams. Now we are operating with charges in hundreds or maybe kilos. Uh, so, so we have a different technology challenge. Um, 
given the fact that the Chinese government has taken this very progressive approach, uh, I believe we will see it fairly quickly and probably also in less than 20 years. <laughs> and I'm sure we will get there. Okay, thank you. And uh, Dr. Lee, do you have any uh, uh, ideas about this point? What do you have China experience? Uh, okay. So there is a probing, probe, there is a saying, uh, of, uh, of Chinese here. 20 years it may be too long. We should focus on the next uh, one or two or five years. Mm -hmm. So, for, for my opinion, <laughs> uh, if we can post a uh, hydrocarbon product into the market uh, within two or five years, 20 years is, is, is absolutely okay. So, the most important for, for hydrocarbon air conditioners may be only next to two or three years. Otherwise, uh, 20 years is too long. 10 years is difficult. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Um, I have one more question back again from Mr. Duncan Singh. And uh, if I have it as a long question, I'm not sure if the, uh, we have enough time to respond to this question. I'm going to pass it to the panelists, and I will kindly ask you to send it by email to the panelists uh, who would like to receive answer from their side, because I do believe it requires uh, maybe a little bit of detailed answer. The question is about the level of uh, uh, retrofitting, if I'm uh, reading the word correctly, because if I have a mistake in it. Uh, required for uh, required for applying the hydrocarbon, or whether only hydrocarbon can be used in a newly uh, designed systems uh, to replace the CFC, and uh, then what is the technical modification required for so, and whether the total new line of equipment has to be produced specifically meant for the hydrocarbon. And I think some of the uh, Issues were addressed already during the presentation of Mr. Lee about mm -hmm. the change requirements in the design, and uh, but maybe the issue of uh, retrofitting was not uh, addressed as it was not the focus of this uh, webinar. Uh, so I would uh, like with this uh, allow me to conclude the session of the questions and answers. I would. Uh, I believe that many maybe have additional questions that they uh, want to check or to share with the uh, my guest or with the panelists and we will make all the information available through the uh, website of your one action for all that in these to communicate and interact with the panelists at a later stage. Uh, with this, I thank you again all. The panelists, thank you for your time, particularly those who are at late hours at night and I would like to hand back uh, thank you, Ayman. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, before we close today's uh, session, I would like to uh, just um, indicate to the participants that due to time constraints, uh, it wasn't possible to take the very many questions we received. Uh, apparently, the topic is uh, of high interest. Uh, but I uh, would like to invite you to send uh, your questions uh, to Ozone Action e group and we will address them directly um, to the panelists and provide you with the required answers. And as Ayman indicated, um, um, information related to today's webinar will be available also on the webinar webpage through the Ozone Action uh, website. So before we close today's session, on behalf of UNEP Ozone Action, I would like to thank Mr. Atul Bagai for introducing today's uh, topic and uh, the facilitator of this webinar, Mr. Ayman el as well as the speakers, Mr. Oli Nielsen, Dr. Ting Shun Lee, Mr. Zong Li Feng, 
and also thank Mr. Uh, Bernhard Siegele uh, uh, for uh, trying to con connect uh, to the session, and we hope to have him in upcoming webinars. Also, I would like to thank all the participants for your time and interest in motion action activities. You will receive shortly by email a link to the information related to today's webinar interest to you, and we are interested to receive your feedback to improve our webinar services, including suggestions for topics and or potential speakers. The webinar is over.